takes place to end the Cold War. But in order to get there, I kind of have to circle back to where we were yesterday because we were talking about how when Reagan comes into office, he has a very different idea on how to deal with the Soviets. Presidents before him said, well, we should be nice to the Soviets. We should, in fact, welcome them to the international community. And Reagan said, that's the exact opposite of what you should do. You should pressure the Soviets should exploit their weaknesses. You dare them to compete against us because they can't keep up. When he starts putting more and more pressure on them, those cracks in the Soviet Union are starting to expand. We now just have to push them over. What we're going to be talking about today is the last step of the Cold War when even the Soviet Union admits that their communist economic system isn't going to work. It's fatally flawed. It's broken from the inside because this is not how human beings operate. So what you need to do is exploit that. Pressure them. Make them try to compete. Now when we were talking yesterday, we saw that Reagan had some really clever ideas on how to make them compete. What did he do to put pressure on them? What's one thing? Yes, Al? Um, Built like a lot more missiles, like nuclear missiles. Absolutely, built a lot more. Huge investments in the military. It says, I dare you to keep up. Try to outspend us. Something else. Isn't it? That thing in space that never actually worked. What was that thing in space? Star, Star, Wars. Star, Wars. Star Wars. But he made them think it was going to work. So if you're not first to figure out Star Wars, we're going to launch. And then you can't launch back. Now, it never actually came to fruition, but they made them think that it would. So you better spend if you're going to keep up. What Gorbachev does is he admits that communism isn't working economically. In order to fix it, what he says is, well, let's just copy one of the greatest economies in the history of the world. Let's allow more economic freedom like the Americans do. He institutes what's called perestroika. And perestroika is just a Russian phrase for restructuring. He loosens the government control over the economy. He allows people to have more individuality and to even uh, open their own businesses, not controlled by the government. When this happens, this is just another signal that the Soviet Union's breaking down. Just like we talked about at the very beginning of this, the idea of containment, if you can just contain communism from spreading, eventually it will destroy itself. It's starting to happen. That is bearing fruit. We see this taking place as more of these small uprisings in Eastern Europe start to get bigger and bigger. And as I told you before, what the Soviets used to do was just roll in the tanks, just slaughter people. Now this is changing. These revolutions aren't being crushed. Gorbachev either doesn't have the stomach, I think he does, but he probably more likely just doesn't have the money. He can't hold on to these puppet states anymore. They're starting to break away and declare independence including a real serious hot spot in the Cold War. In East Germany, they start saying, we should unite. We should have Germany back together again. These revolutions are springing up all over Eastern Europe, and the Soviets aren't stopping it. Now, let me just ask real fast. Is this real good news for us? Yeah. The Soviet Union's falling apart. 
Now I will tell you this, when I was born, I was born into the era of the Cold War. I was born in 1982. You can do the math on that if you want. I'm not 50, as some of the other class said. <laughs> oh my gosh! I am in my 30s. You're 36. I am not 36. <laughs> so we gotta go back to math class. Oh, mercy. 33. 33. 39. Good lord. What year is it? You're definitely not like 32. He's in his 30s. 30. Okay, okay, let's back up, children. It's 2021. I was born in 1982. 30. 30. 30. Okay, all right. So let's just pretend it's 2022. I was born in 1982. Thank you, Wow. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Oh, Counting wow. toes and everything. Okay. Alright, yeah. <sighs> okay. You guys have math finals, don't you? No. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Some people Good luck. To to take those. <laughs> when I was born and when I was a kid, I told you guys about when I was in school and I had to do the duck and cover drills. Yeah. When they said, if the Russians launch, here's what you do. Get under your desk. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. When I was growing up. It was my brothers, were especially the ones to do it because they liked to scare me and beat me up. What they would do is they would say, yeah, probably. We're probably going to go to nuclear war. I'd go and cry to mom, though, no, because she would say, yeah, it's probably true. We're going to nuclear war. I vividly remember this happening when I was a kid. Now, when this happened, I was seven. And I probably didn't get how big and monumental this was, but I remember this happening. The world that I was born into is about to change real fast because Reagan's going to apply more political pressure when he goes to Berlin. Now remember, as we talked about Berlin, Berlin's been divided. It's been split up ever since the end of World War II. There is East Berlin and there's West Berlin. Now, I showed you guys that video of Kennedy and what the Soviets do when all their professional class starts leaving East Berlin. When they build the Berlin Wall, it's designed to keep people in. This is what the communists do. When they build walls, it's to keep people from leaving. We're going to see Reagan go to the Berlin Wall and start applying some more pressure. He goes to Berlin and he says, Mr. Gorbachev, if you want freedom, if you want reform, if you want peace, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Now, the Berlin Wall has been a symbol of the Cold War ever since it was put up. What happens if the Berlin Wall comes down? It's the symbol that really shows the uh, Soviet control. If he allows the Berlin Wall to come down, what are East Berliners going to do? They're going to leave. What Gorbachev does is something that's kind of strange. It's not monumental. He just doesn't do anything. People go to the Berlin Wall, and they start knocking it down. Now, keep in mind, before this era, if you went to the Berlin Wall and tried to knock it down, they'd just shoot you. They'd just pick you off. It's how the communists operate. Now they're going to tear it down and they don't do anything. So what should you do? Tear down. Let's just go tear it down. Gorbachev just stands back and watches it happen. East of Berlin will be united with West Berlin. East Germany is united with West Germany. Germany comes back together for the first time since the end of World War II. Now, like I said, I remember as a kid watching this happen. And I remember being with my brothers and we were watching this on TV. And they said, I didn't think I'd see this happen in my lifetime. Germany's been reunited for the first time since the end of World War II. What's Germany gonna do now that they're reunited? There were a lot of question marks. A lot of people were saying, you better watch out for the Germans. Now that they're reunited, they're going to do something again here. 
Germany adopts democracy. Then the Soviet Union falls apart. It breaks up into multiple nations. And by 1991, Russia adopts democracy. Containment worked. Eventually, the communists destroy themselves. We're going to usher in a new world where now the Soviet Union has fallen and there's only one superpower left. I don't want to scare you. Yeah, well, maybe I do. When the Soviet Union falls apart, a lot of their nuclear weapons go missing. They don't know where they are. That's scary. That is scary. Do they still know? Still don't know. You can buy a nuclear weapon. What? On the black market. Going rate for nuclear weapons is probably about $20 million. <laughs> so summer jobs, if you're interested, okay? Uh, find one. But don't you need like a launching pad? And so like get, get the weapon, but you can't launch it. Like it's oh boy. Not really. Uh, all right, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare you now. You can fit a nuclear weapon in a briefcase. What? I thought they were big. They can't be. The missiles cause God, how much do I want to scare you before your math final? Um, there's a technology called Mervine, M-R-V-N. It's shrinking down a nuclear warhead. So what they used to be was actually probably about the size of this table was about one. You can shrink it down now. We're about, you could fit um, probably about 50 of them on this table now. Awesome. They are expensive. What did you find? I have good news for you. Not forever, but for 10 whole weeks. Well, 11 weeks. Oh, wait. That's what we're going to talk about. That's kind of sad. There's only 11 months. I don't want to hear the dates. I just know that I have something. Your summer is going to be only days. Really? No. Say that again. Now, let me go ahead and explain a couple of things. First up, I want to show you just some real short videos about when the Berlin Wall comes down, but then we're going to talk about your extra credit. So here's the deal. For your videos. Okay. God bless America. However, what I would suggest is, I would keep your We Didn't Start the Fire page real close because we're going to do that later on. And also, I would say keep your notebooks real close because there's a caveat as to how you need to fill out your We Didn't Start the Fire page. So I keep those close by, but I just want to show you some real short videos as to when the Berlin Wall comes down. 